We don't exactly know what to expect, but we do think that there will be a, a reemergence of uh, coronavirus in the upcoming respiratory season. Uh, we don't know to what extent it will reemerge. We don't know whether it will be a, a peak as high as the current one. Uh, it, may, it may or may not be. Uh, we think we'll be in better position to respond at that time because we had a chance to build up the public health infrastructure. If that happens, it's going to be really complicated because we're going to see patients presenting syndromically with things that look like COVID. So influenza A, influenza B, uh, they can present with high fevers and symptoms that, that could be consistent with COVID. Uh, having some combination of coverage with molecular tests for flu A, flu B, RSV, and COVID uh, would be important to include, and that would, inc that would need to consider the, uh, the testing capacity requirements, the number of individual systems necessary to run those tests alone or in combination. Because if you have uh, an increased number of cases that present for evaluation, and you have to run multiple tests on each person, that's going to stress out the module capacity, right? So ways to increase module capacity to run multiple tests, ways to combine tests into one to take advantage of modular capacity are gonna be what the upcoming respiratory season is all about because we're gonna deal with it. Uh, very likely see all these viruses in circulation. They all kind of look like each other uh, symptomatically and we're, we have a big job ahead of us to figure out and to really deconvolute the possible causes. Hopefully by then we'll have some therapies too. We already have therapies for influenza. Therapies are developing for respiratory syncytial virus. Um, and new therapies are being explored for coronavirus. So maybe by this fall, we'll have some therapeutic options that would require an answer for each individual pathogen on the list. And that's gonna drive a lot of need for detection and discrimination between the targets. Uh, we're also seeing it being used now for some pre-procedure testing. So patients who are going into surgery might be emergency surgery. Uh, surgeons would like to know, is my patient on the operating table positive for coronavirus? Uh, we're also seeing it now being used for elective procedures. So patients who are about to undergo chemo, it's important to know if they're positive for coronavirus at the time of chemo induction, right? Because you're gonna immunosuppress them, right? Really any procedure, whether it's a medical or dental procedure, is probably gonna be preceded increasingly by testing pre-procedure to find out the patient's status before that procedure happens. That's part of the get back to work strategy for hospitals, right? They need to get back to doing these important procedures, elective procedures. Hospitals are dying right now because there are no elective procedures to provide revenue for them. So getting back to normal for elective procedures, medical or dental, dental offices are shut down across the country. We need to get back doing, to doing elective dental procedures. How do we do that? Well, I think pre-procedure testing will become part of that formula. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest challenges right now is understanding the difference between an antibody test and a direct test for active infection versus previous infection. You can't really conflate the two because they're two very different pieces of information. Um, the antibody tests tell you whether you've had exposure to the virus in the past. Um, when the antibody tests are positive, the current antibody tests for a particular kind of antibody called IgG, that antibody takes two weeks to develop after the onset of symptoms. And so by the time the antibody is detectable, the patient may is very likely to be on the path to recovery, maybe no longer actively infected. So it doesn't really tell you about active infection status. It tells you about prior exposure.
that's really useful information for us to know the degree of exposure we've had as a population, but it doesn't really help you with patient management for the patient who's sick in front of you because there you're trying to figure out do they have active infection or not. And so that's where the nucleic acid-based tests come in, is in resolving the, the clinical problem sitting in front of you relative to a symptomatic patient. So one person, can, a asymptomatic individual, can serve as a, uh, as a, a super spreader of, uh, of infection. So I think there, there, there may be a place for us to help identify those individuals in our midst who might be active carriers. This will probably apply initially to high-risk populations uh, where the um, consequences of a, of a super spreader uh, are going to be more, more severe, like in a nursing home setting, for instance, or lots of people at risk for infection in one place. And so that's why I think it's, it's so important to focus on the vulnerable populations and trying to identify the super shedders and the carriers within uh, that group to be able to isolate them, provide the appropriate uh, infection control um, precautions. Like for instance, our uh, partners in South Africa have been deploying mobile van capacity for COVID-19 testing. Uh, they're building the ability to drive a van into a village in Africa and do spot testing of the possibility for COVID being in a, lo in a local population then moving on to the next site. That could come to the U.S. as well. And for instance, it might be really efficient to be able to drive lab capacity to a nursing home if there's a suspected outbreak. <clears throat> test the cases, test the workers at the nursing home, uh, find out whether there are um, carriers within the population, asymptomatic carriers even. That's where this mobile capacity could really come into play because they could, you could come up with an answer fairly quickly on site without having to send specimens to a central lab and then wait for the results to come out of a batch processing system.